The Stanford Cardinal enter 2023 with a new coach and new hopes and dreams. However, it may take a while for Troy Taylor to start building this program back up. He's got a lot of work to do. There's a lot of talent leaving this roster, not a lot of transfers coming in to replace it, and a very, very tough conference to play in this year with the high level of competition that is in the Pac-12 this season. So can Stanford and Troy Taylor be a little bit of a surprise team here in 2023 and maybe even break their way into the postseason? Or will the Stanford Cardinal be a team that, again, has a long rebuilding road ahead of them? What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate, and welcome to my channel. I'm predicting all 133 FBS-level college football teams this summer, which means I'm doing your favorite team. So hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you know when your favorite team gets uploaded. And you can do more than that to help me support my channel. You're doing one right now by watching the video. You can do more by liking, commenting, sharing, and really anything else you can think of to help me interact and support with my channel anything you guys do i'm greatly greatly thankful for and i appreciate anything you guys are willing and able to do the stanford cardinal in 2023 how do we do preview predictions around here hey i'm glad you asked we take a look at a roster overview take a look at who the team lost who's coming back and who's coming in through the transfer portal and recruiting class as well as taking a look at the 2023 football schedule and giving it a good old game by game preview prediction for the Stanford Cardinals. So without further ado, let's break it down and get into 2023 predictions for Stanford. Again, if my PowerPoint slide would transition, there it goes. Quarterback room. I know the text is a little hard to see. I do apologize. Uh, you do lose Tanner McKee, who is in that uh, quarterback room. He's gone, I believe, off to the NFL. 2,947 yards, 13 touchdowns, eight interceptions on 62% completion percentage. Yes, the numbers do not jump out at you, but raw talent-wise, he was a pretty good quarterback, and he will be missed by this Cardinal team. Uh, who do you return? Well, you do have some two. You do have two guys returning that threw some passes last year, albeit none of them threw over nine passes. Ari put two through nine passes, did have two touchdowns, and Ashton Daniels is coming back there as well. Which honestly. Uh, Stanford fans, you can let me know who's winning that quarterback battle in the comment section below. I believe it should go to Ari Patu. I believe he does give Troy Taylor's club their best chance for success. Uh, but honestly, I'm not super high on either of them. I do believe Ari Patu is the better of the two. Uh, so we'll see what ends up happening there with the quarterback room for the Stanford Cardinal. In the running back room, well, hey, some good news here. You do return your top two leading rushers from last season in Casey Filkins and EJ Smith. Uh, 478 yards, four touchdowns for Filkins, and 206 yards and three touchdowns for Smith. In the wide receiver room, you do lose some good talent here as well. As uh, Michael Wilson and Bryson Tremaine are going to be gone, as well as Higgins, uh, your leading receiver uh, from last season. 704 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, he was actually more of a tight end type player. You see him in my tight end slot. He was a tight end uh, wide receiver player, but regardless, you do lose Elijah Higgins, who was your leading receiver last year, as well as, of course, Wilson, who was your third leading receiver, and Tremaine, who was your second leading receiver. Or sorry, Wilson, your fourth leading receiver. My apologies. John Humphreys does come back at 348 yards and a touchdown last year, as well as Moody Rubin, uh, who was down the list of ways in, in terms of uh, wide receivers last year. However, you do get a freshman and Tiger Bachmeyer who enters into this program. We already talked about Elijah Higgins was a really big piece of the offense last year. You do lose him, but return it as a tight end and Benjamin Euro Eurosec, who had 445 yards and a touchdown for this team last season. Offensive line-wise, you do lose Walter Rouse, Drake Nugent, Brandon Bragg, and Miles Hinton. You are going to return Levi Rogers and get some transfers coming in and Alec Bank and Trevor Mayberry to help bolster that offensive line. In the defensive room, what can we look forward to with Stanford this year? Well, again, it's a lot of lost talent. Stephen Heron and Anais DeCosmo are going to be gone off of this defensive line. Uh, DeCosmo, 26 tackles, a sack and a half last year. And Heron, five and a half sacks, which did lead the team last season. Also 37 tackles. Believe he was a top 10 tackler, if not pretty close to it on this team last year. You are going to return some pretty key pieces though, there, though. David Bailey was a top five tackler. He was your fourth leading tackler last season, two and a half sacks. He does come back. Uh, as well as returning uh, Tobin Phillips and Lance Canelli there as well. So some solid pieces on the defensive line returning for Stanford. In the linebacker room, uh, you are going to uh, lose, I should say, your fifth leading tackler from last year in Jacob Magnum Farrar. Uh, Lavani 
the Mooney is also going to be gone. He was your leading tackler last year at 76 tackles for this team last year. And Ricky Miezen is also gone off this linebacking grouping. Had 45 tackles last year. Again, tied for fifth on the team with Magna Ferrar and four sacks for him last season. Who do you return? Tristan Sinclair, Spencer Jorgensen will both come back. And you get a transfer coming over in Gaithan Bernadelle. Uh, coming into this program. Uh, he's a transfer coming over from FIU, a three-star rated transfer according to 24-7. In the defensive back grouping, again, a lot of talent gone here as well. Caillou Blue Kelly, very, very good player. Six passes defended, 35 tackles last season. Kendall Williamson uh, had two pass defended, an interception, and was tied for your second leading tackler last season. Uh, you also are going to be losing guys by the name of Ethan Bonner. Jonathan McGill also is lost. McGill was your second leading tackler last year, or I guess tied with it with Williamson with 51 tackles. Uh, and then Pat Fields uh, is gone as well. 42 tackles, two sacks in the past defended last season. Who do you return? Alakai Gilman, uh, Omari Porter, and Scotty Edwards do come back to this team. So again, some solid talent, but... Really not a whole lot to work with here for your new head coach in Troy Taylor. Not a lot of transfers coming in to help bolster this roster. I think it's going to be a bit of a real rebuilding process when you take at this, at this roster for the Stanford Cardinal. Your head coach is Troy Taylor. Offensive coordinator is Tavi Tup Pritchard. And your defensive coordinator is Bobby April as we take a look at the schedule for the Cardinal in 2023. Any game at home is going to be underlined. Any game in italics or the slanted text is a game the Cardinal will play on the road. Any game in green is a game I have the Cardinal being able to win. Any game in yellow is a game where, hey, okay, the other team puts up a fight, but the Cardinal are going to be able to win, and red is a loss. So without further ado, let's preview predict Stanford football in 2023, starting out with a road game against Hawaii. Now, I, I, I'm just going to put my prediction up on the screen here. Uh, Hawaii was just... It was, was not a great football team last year. Tommy Chang ended up uh, coming in, I believe that is his name, as that uh, head coach. And he's got a rebuilding process of his own to do with the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors to try to get back, them back into the postseason in 2023. However, I do think they are a more talented team than Stanford. And with the Cardinal going on the road, playing a game in Hawaii, I think that's a game that they're going to end up dropping. Again, not a lot of super great talent on the Stanford team. I think they definitely have some pieces there with, uh, at Hawaii that can put up some pretty good numbers this year. So uh, the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors, I do have beating the Pac-12 Stanford Cardinal in week one. And then Stanford has no shot against USC in week two. Uh, that defense, while it does have questions, ended up getting a lot more transfers to help bolster up that depth, and that offense is world-class. Uh, Caleb uh, Williams comes back, uh, your Heisman-winning uh, quarterback, uh, along with just a plethora of weapons. I could sit here all day uh, and be able to uh, name some players, but USC uh, is really, or I should say Stanford, really has no shot against USC in 2023. However, I do think Stanford is going to get a win here against Sacramento State, who was Troy Taylor's former program. Now, while the Hornets, I do believe, are going to keep this one close, I think Troy Taylor is going to be motivated, is going to be uh, looking to go ahead and try and win this game here uh, for pride's sake. And uh, and obviously Stanford, I think, is going to be the more talented team, especially without Troy Taylor at Sacramento State. Uh, he was a phenomenal head coach for them last season. And without him, I don't think Sacramento State is going to be quite as good as a team. So Stanford does get a win here. And then you dive into more Pac-12 games. I think you're going to lose to Arizona. And while that team does have a lot to be replaced on the defensive side, the offense should be enough to be able to get past this Stanford defense, right? And I don't think the offense of Stanford is going to be able to put up enough points uh, to be able to uh, uh, match what Arizona is going to put up with Jaden Delora, some really good weapons in that wide receiver room. Arizona is going to be able to win that game. Oregon, I think, is going to be able to win the game against Stanford as well. Again, much like the conversation with USC, a superior talenter team. They got a Heisman dark horse at quarterback in Bo Nix. And then when you go ahead and take a look at some other pieces there, yes, the defensive questions, but they loaded up on talent. They got some talent. Um, uh, the my apologies, they do have some talent coming in through the transfer portal at wide receiver as well. A lot of nice pieces coming back on the offensive side. Oregon is the supremely talented team. They will walk away with a win against the Stanford Cardinal. And then after three games at home, 
After your bye week, you go back on the road to play Colorado. Deion Sanders and Boulder, Colorado are hanging from the rafters right now as that entire program and roster have been turned upside down. It is completely new, a completely new system, and a completely new set of expectations there in Boulder. I think they're going to be competitive, and I think Deion's going to start winning very, very quickly. I just think a lot of these players need a year to adjust to maybe some of them, not only the power five level, but to the Deion Sanders system and Colorado will start winning. Granted, that could be a very heavy sleeper team this year. Hard to predict Colorado this season. One of the hardest teams to predict. I believe I forgot to mention that in my, in my Colorado video. But regardless, Stanford will not be beating the Buffaloes this season. They also will not be beating the UCLA Bruins this year either, in my opinion. Again, a lot of solid pieces on that defense for UCLA that end up returning. And yes, you have to replace Dorian Thompson-Robinson and Zach Charbonnet, but uh, they're bringing in Carson Steele to replace Charbonnet at running back. And with DTR at quarterback, they got three guys there that I think any one of them are going to be solid options to step in place of DTR. So UCLA overpower Stanford be able is going to be able to win that game. Washington is a playoff sleeper this year with Michael Penix Jr. at quarterback and one of the best wide receiver rooms in the country. They're going to shred the Stanford defense and I could stop there, but I'm not going to. If the secondary um, can improve and this defensive front seven can be healthy, that's going to be a very good team this year. Stanford has no shot competing with the Washington Huskies, what I think are a very good football team coming into next season. Washington State has a lot of new pieces to work with in the wide receiver room, but they do return Cameron Ward, uh, and I think by this point in the season, a lot of connections are going to be made with that wide receiver room, and Stanford, I don't think, uh, defense is going to keep up, especially with all they lose in the secondary. Uh, and there are just some... Uh, Again, this entire roster up and down for Stanford is just iffy, right? There's not like uh, any one good, true, solid pieces. There's no really any star power uh, on this team. I'll probably mention that a lot later. Uh, I think they're going to lose to Washington State. I think they're going to lose to Oregon State as well. That's a potential sleeper team in the Pac-12 to try to get to Las Vegas. I think they have serious hopes of getting to a Pac-12 championship as well. DJ Uyunglele coming in there to be that quarterback transferring over from Clemson. And then when you take a look at Damian Martinez, he is a stud at running back. They've got a lot of other good pieces on offense. Defensively, yes, they've got some holes to fill with guys leaving to uh, the NFL and to the transfer portal and some other areas as well. Uh, but Oregon State has got all the talent in the world to be a very, very good football team. And I think they're going to be able to easily beat the Stanford Cardinal, as will the Cal Golden Bears. That's a very, very talented team that just plays in a very, very tough conference. Again, if you've seen my Cal video, I don't have them making a bowl game, but they're definitely going to be able to beat the Stanford Cardinal here. And then Stanford will not beat Notre Dame either. Notre Dame is going to be a team that I really like this year. They got a big play ability quarterback with Sam Hartman coming in. I think that's immediately going to end up boosting that offense there at Notre Dame with all the weapons they, they're going to have there. And defensively, I think this is a pretty sound team under Marcus Freeman there as well. So Notre Dame uh, is going to be able to beat Stanford, which leads me, Cardinal fans, to a 11-1 record. Now, I don't see this team being much better than 4-8 this year. If some of these guys emerge as some stars, as some studs, as some guys that can put up some big numbers, uh, maybe this team can be a pretty solid uh, team year one under Troy Taylor. But I think there is a long, long, long rebuilding process ahead for him and for this program. I think this is going to be one of the worst teams in Power 5 this season. Just they lose so much talent uh, from last season. And there's not a whole lot of, in my opinion, at least redeeming qualities uh, about this roster. Sorry, Cardinal fans. It sounds like I'm being harsh, and I am. But there's a long rebuilding process here for Stanford in order to get back to where they were uh, in, the, er in uh, the earlier years. Um, there when they were trying to compete for a playoff spot. But a long rebuilding process ahead that Stanford's got 1-11 this year, though, is my prediction for 2023. And let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. And as always, remember to play hard but tailgate harder. And I'll see all you guys when we recap the Pac-12 in my standings video out later on tonight. Goodbye.